I would probably tell my younger self just to be ready. Be ready for the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful journey of, of what's ahead of you. At the end, it's gonna be all worth it. Both of my parents came from Mexico in the 1970s for better opportunities. And what began as a casual father-daughter day at the golf course turned into a passion and dedication to the game of golf. I would say my journey in golf is not traditional. By the time I was seven years old, you know, my dad took me to the golf course for the first time and just laid eyes on this huge landscape of greenery, trees, and that's when I just started becoming curious of what of what this place was. What my dad also instilled in all of us is that grind, that necessity to get better every day. It's been quite a roller coaster, and of course there's been times where I didn't think I could pull it off, but 12 years later, still love this game and, and love what it's uh, done for me and my family. I felt that representation was super important. Nancy Lopez, and she's a winner. When I was a young girl going to the LPGA tournaments, if I would see like someone that looked closely like me, I would get super excited and tell my dad, you know, look, she looks like me. That means I could do it too. And that would just mean everything to me. <laughs> I think I was finally on a platform where I could reach people and, you know, these organizations like Girls Golf and SBGA, they were eager to work with me. These organizations just really create this access and create that availability to these kids to where, you know, 20 some years ago, that wasn't going to be possible. So you see your shoulder and your wrist are a triangle, right? I realized how important golf was for business. And I saw that there are so few women. There would be five women in a field of over 100 men. And I said, what, there's something wrong with this picture. There you go. We did need somebody like Lisette to open the doors for us. And now watch out, because now all these other young girls are coming behind her. But it's really thanks to Lisette. It's so emotional for me because, you know, I've been there since day one with our Lisette and just how she's blossomed and she continues to give back. And, you know, all of the people don't understand, you know, the struggle it was even in the beginning. I've had opportunities being in the foundation that I never would have dreamed of. Coming with Lisette's house, I was like, who would have thought? I think Lizette represents an identification towards me because she's also Latino. She also represents everybody in Southern California. She's literally like from here, from West Covina, which is really close by to where I live. She is a, a big role model for me because it's like she taught me no matter like if you don't have enough money, you can always make it big. She makes the sport seem very inclusive of everybody. If these foundations didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to see these girls at their true potential. We wouldn't see them becoming strong, powerful, outspoken women. It is a, a wonderful thing to, to be a part of and to be one of few Latinas in a male dominant sport that is changing. Um, it's been quite an honor. As women or as athletes, we say we could figure it out our own. Sometimes it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not feel okay. This is where um, your village, your inner circle can really push you and take you to that next level and refine yourself. <laughs>